Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This all happened in August of 2017. I was 23, and I just moved back into my mom's place, which happened to be about 30 minutes from my nearest friend's place. My car broke down, so I was Ubering everywhere that I had to go. I went down to my friend's place to help them move. I went to Target to grab some champagne and orange juice because I apparently hated myself and thought an imminent hangover was just a great idea. Fast forward to that night and of course, I am doubled over throwing up with a migraine and I can barely lift my head. And I have to work the next day's morning shift. My friends have no idea where they have any sort of over-the-counter meds for headaches. But of course, the stoner of the house offers me an edible. Now, I may have killed the bottle of champagne, but I haven't touched marijuana in years. I ate half of that edible, and I waited about 45 minutes to feel better and call my Uber. I was getting picked up in an apartment complex and of course had to walk to the front door to find the driver because I have never met an Uber driver that can locate any address with accuracy. I get in the back seat and he turns around to introduce himself. This guy is a southern drawl that would make molasses seem like water. It was at this moment that I realized that I messed up. I told him that I had a migraine and that I just wanted to go home. He pulls out a bottle of water that was already opened and some random pills and tells me that this should make me feel so much better. So of course, I politely grabbed them and then proceeded to stuff them into the seat and then shove the water bottle in the pocket in front of me. We begin our 30-ish minute journey to my mom's apartment. If it weren't for Mary Jane coming along for the ride, I probably would have hopped out right then. This guy starts off the drive by telling me prison stories, and then, somehow, it delves into how the world is going to end by December 20-something of 2017. Every few sentences... He's now bringing up his bunker. He asked me constantly if I just wanted to head there instead of home. My high-ass self kept telling him that I'd love to, but I have work so I can't. So, maybe next time, I guess. His cycling through conspiracies from the Earth is flat to Kandahar, Afghanistan's giants. He says, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but... Look up Kandahar, Afghanistan on YouTube. Also, in case y'all didn't know this, the world ain't heliocentric. Just get a pair of binoculars and you'll see. At this point, he's telling me that he has an arsenal of guns. He asked me if I have guns and, and my liberal millennial ass tells him that I have a lot of guns. He grows opium at his bunker and again asks me to come with him. I am panicked. I'm texting everyone that I know, sharing my location, and I started recording. I managed to get about 7 minutes in total of this 30-minute drive on film. So, we're getting closer and closer to the exit that he needs to take to drop me off. He is still in the far left lane on this four-lane highway. I kept telling him to move over and that the exit is coming up. And this creepy-ass driver keeps telling me how well-stocked his bunker is. And then he misses my exit. Finally, I lose it. I start screaming at him to get me home and that my mom is waiting for me and that I have work tomorrow. He finally does get off the exit after I started kicking his seat, threatening to jump out of his moving car. I ran out of his car so fast 
when he hit the red light outside of the apartment complex. And as soon as I got inside, I tried telling my mom what happened, but she brushed it off and was more disappointed that I told her that I had taken an edible. The next morning, I coherently explained what actually happened and showed her the videos, and then we reported him to Uber. I still take Ubers on occasion, but I will never use one while being alone or inebriated ever again. And this is the reason that I don't consume THC. The universe knows when I'm high and things like this happen to me. So, creepy Uber driver wanting to take me to his bunker. Let's not meet ever again. I, a 21-year-old female, had just started applying for a college in my area, and I needed to go on campus to take my test for my classes. I had recently gotten into a car accident, and my car was completely totaled unfortunately, so that means that I needed to use something cheap and easy. Uber and Lyft are my go-tos in this sort of situation. However, unfortunately, Uber is the more expensive one between the two. In both apps, you're able to put up a profile photo to help the drivers identify you easier. So, I use this feature. This is important to remember, as I am white, but in the photo, I looked a little tan because of the lighting. Growing up, I was always told to be wary and safe when I went out in public. With that in mind, I can remember the driver was an older gentleman in his 60s around I think. My apartment complex can be difficult to navigate since the GPS doesn't like to take you to the right building. I opted to use the text feature on the app just to help my driver find my building easier. And he read it. Keep this in mind. Once he found me, I got in, and he began the usual niceties that you have when you meet a stranger. He asked me if I was Hispanic, to which I replied no and that I'm white. He suddenly became quite talkative and started complimenting me a lot for not getting upset. The ride was about 10 minutes, and within that time span, he asked me if I was married or had any kids, if I had a boyfriend, whether or not that I lived alone, and if I had any pets. I'm typically very alert when I'm alone with someone, and this started setting off some bells in my head. I was vague and honest with my answers, which could have gotten me in trouble. And once our ride ends, he told me that since I was such a nice girl, that he would buy my lunch. He gave me $20 and tried to continue talking to me while I was getting out of the car. I took the $20 because I truly needed it and I was afraid to make him angry, but I wasn't interested in continuing this conversation with this older guy. After I finished my test, my proctor pulled me aside and gave me a piece of paper with my phone number on it. Turns out, it was my Lyft driver's phone number. He tried to enter the building and talk to me while I was taking my test, and thankfully, my proctor had my back and had to get the campus police officer to escort him off the property since he wouldn't leave. I never saw him again, and fortunately, I had already given him a good rating, so I continued to get him on occasion. I always canceled that ride as soon as I realized that it was him. I never reported it because I was afraid of causing waves, but if I get him again, I'll be sure to report him. I'm not sure if that would hold up anymore since it was already a few months ago. My Uber driver freaked me out after changing routes. A little context for this one. 
Just so you know, this ended up being longer than I expected. I'm a 32-year-old female. I live in a country where women get murdered in staggering numbers. About 10 to 11 are killed daily, according to statistics, and most of these murders go unpunished. Hell, many don't even get investigated by police. These murders range from domestic abuse to random abductions. For example, several women have been abducted in regular taxis and services like Uber, and then their bodies turn up abandoned with signs of rape and sexual abuse. As for my story, I usually get around town in my own car, but I've used Uber on multiple occasions. This is not Uber bashing, by the way. Most times it is a safe and reliable service, which is why I use it. And I try not to be paranoid despite the stories of women that have gone missing this way. Anyway, this means that every woman I know has thought about what they would do if they found themselves in this situation. Stuff like being on the phone with someone the whole ride, not falling asleep no matter how tired slash drunk you are, sharing your location through another app, assessing whether jumping out of a moving car is worth the risk, and even carrying weapons. I carry a pocket knife and I learn how to use it. Survivors have told stories of their driver going quiet, turning off the app, and changing routes to streets they don't recognize. They try to pass it off as just taking shortcuts. That being said, one day after work, I had to take a taxi home and I scheduled an Uber as usual. The car rolled up, the make and model matched, the plates matched, and the driver looked like the photo. So far, so good. I climbed inside the car, greeted the driver, and immediately shared my live location with my hubby, letting him know I was on the way. As an extra precaution, I always check the locks can be disengaged by hand, and bonus points to cars with windows that can be cranked down manually. The drive started out normal. The driver was an older guy, friendly. We struck up a conversation, you know, small talk. We found a lot of traffic, and the driver asked if I wanted to take an alternate route. I pointed at an access road that I normally use to skip traffic, and he switched lanes. We were going down the access road, and this is when things started getting sketchy. He said that he made a wrong turn, and we kept driving farther and farther away from the main road, supposedly looking for a way to get back on track. The app was still running as normal, and the GPS was telling him how to get back on the main road, but he kept ignoring it, saying that we were now too far away, and that he knew another way to get to my destination faster. So this is when alarms start going off in my head especially because we kept getting closer to a bad part of town. True, if you choose those neighborhoods, you can find another main road on the other side, but most people avoid it for being the aforementioned bad part of town. Like, police don't even patrol these streets sometimes. As he drives deeper into the neighborhood, he notices I'm tensing up. Truth is, I was debating whether I should reach for my knife or if I was being super paranoid and the driver was honestly just trying to get to the other main road. So he starts telling me about the neighborhood, and that I shouldn't be scared, that it was dangerous, but that good people live there. Honestly, I wasn't so worried about the people living in the neighborhood as it was about this guy taking the scenic route. So I started talking to about how I was aware there was a road that crossed to the other side and that I knew exactly where I was. The conversation at some point turned to his daughter, who was college-aged, and I kept making as many parallels as I could between that girl and myself, hand on my pocket knife by this point, the other hand ready to unbuckle the seatbelt, while I kept an eye on the map to make sure we were getting closer to the other main road. And thankfully, we were. I did not begin to relax until I started recognizing where we were. We did eventually make it to my own neighborhood, and I made him stop a block before reaching my house. Didn't want the guy to know where I actually lived, and I skipped out of there as fast as I could. I really, really hope I was just being paranoid and that I was never actually in any danger. But damn, that was an intense ride. This is not my story, but my husband's, and it happened to him about a decade ago. My husband, a white European, was then working in China for about a year now with a good friend of his, GJ, a native Chinese. They were both their early 20s. It was nighttime, and they had to make a transfer within a large city 
from Airport A to Airport B. So at Airport A, they got touted by a guy that offers to drive people without actually being a registered taxi service. Those were pretty common, and you probably can still encounter such people to this day in various countries. And seeing as it was a pretty ordinary thing, they had no qualms in taking him up after agreeing on a fare. They loaded up their bags, got in the back seat, and away they went. It was all going fine for the first bit of the drive. But then, they went into an industrial sort of area, and my husband and GJ were like, What? They demanded to know what was going on. The driver said something about needing to pick up a friend, and after a while, they stopped to pick up another guy who sat up in front with him. They didn't speak and were really quiet and shifty, and the driver seemed to drift a little aimlessly around the area. Gigi was having none of that. He yelled at the driver to take them back to the main road and to their destination, saying that he knew a higher-ranking police inspector guy in the city. My husband was seated behind the driver, and he was pumped full of adrenaline, totally prepared to grab him from behind if need be. Thankfully, there was no funny business, and the driver quickly went back to the main road and then got them to Airport B. My husband reckons that they may have wanted to rob them and take their bags because Europeans have money, which is a bad stereotype. He was actually broke as fuck. But gladly, nothing of the sort materialized. They probably might have been abandoned there or worse. Good to know to be confident about flaunting your connections, even if they're real or not. I've worked in restaurants for almost 10 years, so I'm accustomed to getting out late. One night, after finishing a double shift at a ramen spot, I had my usual beer and I decided to Uber home. My Uber arrived and I checked the plate and all, and the gentleman confirmed my name. I spent half of the ride almost dozing off. As the ride progressed, I noticed the driver kept staring at me through the mirror, never said a single word, no expression, just a blank stare. I figured exhaustion and the beer had gotten the best of me, and he was probably staring because he thought that I was drunk. And later on, I also noticed that he had taken a different highway and that we were making our way through Rikers Island. It was a route that I wasn't accustomed to, but he had his ways open, and I figured that he was trying to take some sort of shortcut. We kept getting further into Rikers Island, and the area had become full of trees and construction machines, neon cones, and also cracked cement. And then he came to a sudden stop. My car just broke. Get out and call a new Uber. I was confused. There hadn't been any indication that a tire had popped or it had ran out of gas or etc. I go out and before I ask anything, he stepped on the gas and then sped off with a car perfectly fine. Alone by a construction zone, I started freaking out and then I called another Uber. When he arrives, his first question was why I was in the middle of nowhere, especially that it was so late. It was around 1am at this point. I told him about the Uber driver and he urged me to report it. I reported it. I checked the profile. It had 4.8 stars, the same license plate, but it was not the same man in the picture. The report never really got anywhere, but I can't help but feel that I encountered a possible murderer or rapist. 
and here are the top comments for my last video. And here's the riddle for this video. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.